Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to today's Kendo rant. Um, I've got a few questions to get through and then I'm going to do a little bit of a rant um, on uh, one of the grading questions from this book again uh, because I found another little gem to share with you. So uh, let's get right into it. <coughs> first, um, hey Andy, when you talked about Kamai, how can I practice attacking first? I line up across from the opponent, bow, take three steps uh, lower, I assume you mean Sonkyo, uh, and then Hajime. How can I practice to get the first or even just a faster initiated attack? Okay, um, <clears throat> so first off, it's not important to get an immediate attack straight away after Hajime. Um, sometimes it, it's good, but it's not like the goal, okay? Um, first off, so I don't want you to sort of misunderstand there. But um, what you must be is as soon as you step up from Songkyo, in fact, before you even go down into Songkyo, you must be mentally ready. Okay, you must be switched on. The minute you first take the first bow, and then you take the three steps in, this bow is when you switch on. Right, now we've started. Okay, and then you've got to get your spirit switched on and ready to go. Then, as you stand up from Sonkyo, bam, straight into Kamae. And you must be ready to attack immediately at that point. Doesn't mean you do attack at that point, but you must be ready to attack at that point. Okay, so you need to sharpen up your Kamae. That's what that means, okay? So make sure that your left foot is ready to launch immediately without any hesitation. It doesn't mean you should attack without hesitation. It doesn't mean that you should attack immediately. It does just means that you should be ready to. Uh, when you do attack, you should do so without he hesitation, just so I, I don't want to kind of mislead you on what I just said. But <clears throat> um, basically, the, what slows... There's two things... that. I, well, there's more than two things, but there's two major things, potentially three major things, as things keep popping up in my head, <laughs> uh, that tend to cause people to slow down, uh, for their waza to slow down. Uh, number one is that their left leg's not ready. That's the most common one, okay? Um, their left leg, when they're stood in Kamai, their left leg isn't ready to launch them, so they have to adjust it before they go. Uh, that's one thing that stops um uh, most people um, making the fastest attack that they possibly can. Secondly, is too much um, too much power in your right arm. So they pull the shinai this way to make an attack. So the shinai makes a larger arc than it needs to uh, and isn't traveling in its most efficient arc. Um, <clears throat> and lastly, is that sort of hesitation in the in the spirit before they go uh, 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 like this, yeah. Um, that also slows you down as well. So um, make sure you've got power in your left leg, ready to launch at any second. Make sure your right arm is relaxed and you're not grip over gripping the shinai with your right hand as you swing it or as you stand and kamai. And make sure you're switched on, ready to ready to fire as soon as the chance is there. Okay? Hope that makes sense. <clears throat> it's not easy though. It's, it's easier said than done. Very much so. Uh, hey Andy, my question does have a little bit of what you said about uh, changing your kendo as you get older. Uh, I'm struggling to change my kendo now uh, <clears throat> as I'm not in my 20s anymore and after 25 years break from kendo. Uh, I returned uh, but with a kendo mentality in my old days. So I'm getting exhausted very quickly and the strikes I used to do no longer works as I'm not obvious, obviously as fast as before. So how do I adapt my kendo at my age as now I'm 44 years old and quite a lot heavier than before? Uh, not to say that, uh, without needing to say that I get injured because of pushing too much of my body to try and keep up with the keiko. What can you advise on this? Okay, so it's very common for people to come back to kendo after, after a long break. And uh, it happens an awful lot in Japan. Actually, it happens an awful lot in Japan. People, lots of people do kendo loads until they graduate high school or university. Then they get a job and they have to quit pretty much. They don't have time for it. Yeah, and then what happens is then they get married. Uh, then they have kids and the kids get older. The kids get to about six or seven years old. And the kids, they, they decide, oh, let's get the kids started in kendo because that's a good thing for them to do. And then as the kids start kendo, then that person joins kendo. Again, that's a very common pattern and they've had like 10 or 15 years out or even more. Um, so it's not an uncommon thing. And they go through the same thing. They try to do the kendo that they did when they were high school students and <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, so what, what you have to do is um, you have to... You have to remember that um, you have to try and take the good parts from the old days and then strip away the bits that are no use to you anymore. 
okay? You have to be honest with yourself and remember what it is you can do and what it is you can't do. Um, now, there's, there's certain things, um, you don't have the, the muscular power that you had um, when you were younger perhaps, um, or, or fitter for example. Um, so you can't, um, you can't launch as far, you can't stride as far, you can't launch your body as quickly. And if you put too much pressure on your body to do those things, then you are gonna end up with an injury. There are other things though that you can do that you could do before. Uh, things like tenuchi, okay? Tenuchi actually doesn't require you to necessarily be uh, young and fit. Some of the best tenuchi I've seen has, has been on really, really old senses. Um, so it's not an age thing that. Um, also, uh, things like uh, your actual, uh, the spiritual interaction. So what I'd say is, um, as you get older, what you have to do is focus on making fewer attacks towards your opponent, um, but increasing the quality of them. So uh, focus on, instead of uh, attacking all the time, um, attack less, but try and make the quality of those points much better. The quality doesn't mean that they have to, you have to fly at the person really fast, but the actual, um, you know, the, over, the, the criteria of Yuko Tototsu are all perfectly met. Uh, secondly, um, yeah, I mean, you also have to, um, I mean, you have to judge yourself, but also uh, it's good to do the mitori geiko. If you watch, uh, watch on the internet, for example, on YouTube, there's loads of good examples of older kendoka. Uh, you mentioned that you're in your 40s. Um, you're still younger than the people that are in the hachidan taikai, for example. Now, obviously, I know you're not going to be able to go out there and do the same kendo that they are doing. But obviously, and they've obviously continued to practice throughout their years. Yeah, so bear that in mind too. But um, that's the sort of kendo you want to sort of look towards as, as sort of inspiration when you're sort of, uh, as opposed to sort of high school kendo or younger people in the, in the 20s. You're, you're not going to be able to emulate that um, in any way whatsoever. But if you look at those sort of more higher level, uh, eighth dan sort of things. And what I'm talking about is look at their actual, the way that they physically uh, move not just the, the interaction that they have. Um, and yeah, and, and otherwise you have to just be very uh, careful uh, not to injure yourself um, and do the best that you can do um, and still show your best spirit. You can still show the big voice uh, and getting tired is good. It's good to, of course you will get tired quickly, uh, much more so than you did before, uh, but that is okay. Um, try not to, you shouldn't pace yourself too much. You should, you should become very tired at practice. Um, but, but, uh, you must stay within your own limits and not, not injure yourself. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's it really. Um, next, uh, what's the procedure that one goes through to become a sensei? Uh, this is more than a long way off for myself. It's the kind of thing I feel more comfortable asking an open forum that rather than asking my sensei face to face. Fair enough. Uh, that's why this exists. Um, is there a test involved? Uh, is there just loads of paperwork or is it somewhere in between? Uh, thanks again for the series. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, it depends on what you mean by becoming a sensei, right? Uh, because it depends on the area as well. If you're talking about setting up your own kendo club and being the teacher of, of your own kendo club, um, then it depends on the federation that you're in and the country that you're in. Um, and I'm, I'm I assume that there's paperwork involved. I'm sure there's this, uh, probably, there could even be a minimum grade required for you to do that. Um, but you'd have to check that with your local federation. Um, I wouldn't, uh, unless you're living in an area that has very, very little kendo at all, in a country that has very little kendo, I certainly wouldn't look at setting up your own club until you get to at least third dan. Um, Although obviously, if you're in, like I say, if you're in an, in a country where kendo is still developing, um, and you know, you know, there's countries out there that don't even have any third dance. So, you know, if you're in a country like that, of course you have to do it sooner. But if you're in a more a, a country where kendo is more developed, like the UK, for example, or uh, European countries that are like uh, France or Germany or something like that, um, then yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't look at setting up a club until I was at least sort of uh, third dan. Um, sort of setting it up on my own volition, that is. Uh, but yeah, 
otherwise it's it's a case of uh understanding as well though you ha you're taking on a responsibility uh, i'm in a bit of a unique position myself uh in the uk i didn't i don't I didn't set up the club that I practiced at. It was already there, um, and I I joined it. I'm a I, and basically through through my uh, grade and position, really experience. Um, I've I've sort of become uh, the main teacher there, um, but it's not my club. Um, it's it's everyone's club, um, and I I actually don't do very much towards the. Uh, organization and uh, the management of the club uh, because the guys that are doing that uh, do that very well without me uh, and I think they could do a better job than I could so uh, so I leave them to it I just turn up and teach them um, so yeah um, it, it's really a, a situational thing um, to be honest uh, if that makes sense uh, <clears throat> next one. Uh, you doing an ama you do an amazing job explaining the importance of wider stitching in Borger and present a product that isn't uh, narrow stitching on Kendall style. Thank you. Uh, you've explained this in another video already, but uh, already, but it's a great speech, and I can't blame you for repeating yourself. Thank you. Uh, why do you uh, would you please explain how significantly Kendo Star Shinai designs stand out at superior quality over competitors? Okay, so obviously, unlike the Borgu, it's a little bit harder to spot the differences in Shinai because uh, they do look quite similar. Um, I, I don't want to bring up uh, compet competitors' products. I don't like to talk about them. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't really look at them that much, to be honest, anymore. Um, I know about a couple of my competitors mainly because I used to work at them, um, so I do know what goes into them. Um, but I, I try and focus on what I'm doing, uh, certainly in terms of Shinai design. But um, basically, what the, the Shinai design is uh, about for Kendo Star is um, obviously what I do know is that there's 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 a lot of other. You, you specifically asked me about the quality of compared to other competitors. So that's why I'm talking about other competitors, okay? Um, I'm, I'm not making this a sort of diss track, but um, I know uh, there's several of other retailers out there who um, aren't actually operated by people that even have Kendall experience or do Kendall. Um, so that is a really big thing, actually. Um, and, I, I, you know, I'm not just talking like... Uh, Western suppliers either. There are some Western suppliers that they don't have kendo experience. They've got experience in other martial arts. Uh, and there's um, there's ones in Japan as well. They don't have any real martial arts experience. They're just businesses, uh, especially some of the bigger ones. Uh, and <laughs> um, it is a big it is a big thing. Uh, you know, they might employ people that do kendo, but they're you know, it, I know from working in such a place that. Um, people that are employed by such a company are employed to say yes to the boss um, and not really give their opinion, uh, which is mainly the reason why I sort of started moving away from them and I, I ended up setting off on my own. Um, but yeah, I mean, the actual idea of practicing Kendall uh, is super, super important when you're selecting what sort of shinai you should be offering to your customers. Um, and what I do, unlike, I believe, unlike most of my competitors, is that I select them specifically um, or design them specifically with the international market in mind. Uh, I'm, I, I understand I'm probably not, Kendo Star's probably not the cheapest for Shinai, though we do have some on sale right now on the Halloween sale. So if you're looking for Shinai, check them out because uh, we do have some good deals on them actually. Um, we're probably not the very cheapest because I don't prioritize price over quality um, and design. Uh, I've, I've specifically chosen uh, a range of shinai that is uh, good quality bamboo, of course, uh, but the design of them um, is really tailored for the international market. So uh, they need to be well balanced, but also um, durable, uh, because unlike Japan, um, Japan have a very, very high turnover of shinai. Uh, people, you know, uh, use them, break them, throw them in the bin, buy another one, because they can just buy them so easily. Um, it's not like that for us. Um, so I, I know that it's important that, that Shinai are, are durable. Uh, this is why I, I kind of, uh, this is our best selling Shinai, is the Kendo Star uh, original model, um, the all purpose Shinai. It's got the Kendo Star logo on it. Um, they're on sale at the moment, actually. Uh, back on sale, actually. Because um, <laughs> uh, people were asking us to put them back on sale because they are so popular. This is an all purpose Shinai, and I designed this one uh, specifically based off. Um, based off the shinai's that I was using in Japan um, because I thought
thought they were a great balance, um, sort of balance versus durability um, ratio was, was really good with these. Essentially, they're not shaved too thin at the tip, uh, so they've still got a lot of meat here, so they're nice and durable still, um, but there's still enough sort of size here um, for them to feel uh, not too heavy. Uh, they're great for training, they're great for all purposes. You can use these for um, your everyday uh, practice. You can use them for Kirikai, Suchikomi, all sorts of things like that. You can use a Fiji Geiko, you can use them for Shi Ai. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's our most popular one. Uh, that's pretty much unique to our store, to be honest. Um, this sort of all purpose design. Um, we've obviously got other, other models as well. We've got the, uh, the Chikara uh, Jisengata door body type. So obviously you can see it's got a much fatter um, section here. It's a little bit thinner here. So you're losing a little bit of durability. You always will be with a door body or a Jisengata Shinai. You're always going to lose durability there because they're really meant for um, just your, your Jigeko or your uh, uh, Shiai. Uh, but again, uh, we tried to keep a as much meat here as we can. Um, and yeah, uh, you've got the, the Sabu as well, which is sort of smoked version. Um, one of the other things that I'd say about the Shania at Kendo Star as well is I'm really particular over the fittings we use. Um, lots of sort of cheap Shinai. Um, like I say, you can probably go out and find really cheap Shinai online. Um, but uh, I still think that we win on quality, and I think that's really really important for Shinai outside of Japan specifically because people, you know, like I say, the fittings is something I'm quite particular about because I know that a lot of our customers, um, once they break a Shinai, they will they won't just put it in the bin, they'll take it apart and they'll keep the fittings and use it on another Shinai. Um or perhaps build a Shinai from the broken parts and use the fittings again. So the shit the fittings have to be kind of durable as well. Um so that's that's also pretty important. Um, people tend to look after the Shinai more as well, so it's better to have a nice quality, a higher quality of bamboo, um, so that it, you know, it's worth looking after. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think we I think we've got the best range of Shinai out there. Um, we've got we've got quite an extensive range actually, if you look at it. Um, and as I said. Probably not the cheapest on the in the world, uh, but I'm fine with that. I'm totally cool with that. I could I could I could put cheap Shinai out there if uh, if you guys want it, but people don't seem to ask me for that. You know, people don't pe seem to ask me for cheaper Shinai. It's the same with the Borger. It's it. To be honest, Kendo Star isn't supposed to be a sort of. Um, you know, a bargain bin. <laughs> I do my best to keep the price as low as we possibly can. Of course I do. Um, and I, I do my best to, to rotate products on sale um, so that we've always got good deals going on. Um, I think people that are uh, have sort of bought from us a few times will recognise that. Um, I'm always trying to keep the prices um, competitive, of course. Um, I don't have the... Um, I don't have the sort of drive to just drive prices down at the sake of quality, though, which some of our competitors do. Um, it, like I say, it goes the same for the burger. You can get a $300 burger, um, but I'm telling you, it's a piece of junk. Said it before. Um, now, I'm not prepared to put the Kendo Star name to that uh, because I know it's a piece of junk because I do Kendo and I care about Kendo. I'm not just a big business uh, that cares about taking people's money. Of course, um, we are a business though, so making money is important to us. I'm not going to pretend that I'm a charity because we're not. Um, it is important that we do uh, make a profit so that we can continue to do it. Um, but at the same time, you know, I do this for a reason. I do it because I love Kendo and I want everyone else to love Kendo. I want everyone to have a great experience. Um, of buying equipment um, and that, that sort of goes through both to the burger, to the uniforms uh, and, and the Shinai as well so I think that's another thing that really separates us um, from our competitors uh, to be honest so yeah <laughs> I hope that, I hope that um, I hope that answers the question um, Again, um, maybe it just sounds like a sales pitch. Uh, you decide for yourself. <laughs> uh, but if you haven't tried, just give us a try. Um, because I, I think you'll be happy with what you get. Um, so yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, let me start. Uh, let me start on the rant. Um, let's let's talk about this. This is from the uh, the grading question and answer book um, that I've done a few times now uh, in these videos. Uh, obviously, it is in Japanese. Uh, this I know I'm going to get these questions. I always get these questions when when I talk from this book. This book is not available in English. Okay, it is not available in English. If it was available in English, it would be on the Kendo Star website for sale. I guarantee it. Okay. Um, 
If you'd like to see it for sale in Japanese, if you'd like the Japanese version and you'd like me to sell it, just let me know downstairs, and uh, downstairs in the comments that is. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, um, and, and, I'll, uh, and I'll get it and I'll, I'll put it up there, but it is completely in Japanese. There's no English in it whatsoever. And there isn't an English version, okay? Uh, on the topic of books, um, of course, there is the other books that, uh, that we have been selling, the, the rule books and the, uh, the guide for kendo instruction, the, uh, the dictionary, stuff like that. Um, they are on the way, okay? Uh, I got the notification from the ZNKR yesterday that they have, have been shipped to us, so they will be coming back in, in stock very, very soon, uh, but make sure you snap them up. I will announce that they're back in stock, all right? So make sure you're in touch with our Facebook page and all that. I'll, I'll announce all that. Um, but you'll need, if you want one, you'll need to snap them up because they sell out so quick. The minute I get them, uh, they sell out really, really fast. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk about this. This is from an example question for second and third Dan. And the question, um, now I'm translating this off the top of, like just off the top of my head. Uh, I've got a digital uh, dictionary on my screen in front of me, but oh, I don't think I'll need it. But um, it, it, Japanese language is, is different to English, right? Obviously. Uh, <laughs> um, but the, it's grammatically very different and sentences are backwards sometimes um, in, in the way they're structured compared to how Eng English is, is done. Um, so I'm going to apologise up front uh, if my translation is a little bit choppy because um, you have to get to the end of a sentence sometimes to know what it's actually talking about at the start of the sentence. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the question says, um, "What? please explain um, the importance of uh, practicing ke uh, keiko, keiko, so practicing, kendo practice, um, with all your heart, okay? Um, so putting your heart and soul, putting all your heart into kendo practice, put into keiko. Um, please explain the, the importance of that, okay? And it starts off and it says, uh, the word keiko, okay? The word keiko um, is uh, inclusive of uh, those who have gone before teachings, the teachings of those who have gone before and uh, studying and... Um, like uh, examining and uh, considering um, those teachings um, is is the yeah that's the that's kind of the has the meaning uh, in the word keiko. Um, also, uh, in keiko, um, there is the uh, meaning of Tannen and uh, Renma. Uh, they, these are these are kendo related concepts. Okay, so Tannen, Renma. These are repeated practice, basically. Um, to me. Uh, okay, so those um, those uh, meanings are included, and uh, Shuren and uh, Shugyo. So um, the kind of uh, self-improvement, the meaning of self-improvement uh, as well. Generally, uh, the next points um, should be uh, practiced wholeheartedly um, when doing keiko, okay? And then there's a list of seven, uh, seven points to improve the quality of your keiko. Okay, uh, I think that's going to be the title of this video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, um, number one, uh, shinai no ten. So, um, shinai inspection, uh, warming up, and uh, considering your uh, fitness um, and safety uh, sh should be always considered. Number two, um, making a, um, a, a goal and um, having the uh, willingness to uh, study um, towards that goal uh, should be the structure of the, of the K-Core. 
Um, so, uh, place importance on Deigi uh, and uh, manners. Okay, so the manners must be placed at very much importance. Uh, number four. Tachiai no So the first, the first strike of your encounter uh, should be treated with importance, and um, you should not neglect the uh, concept of striking ippon ippon. So each cut individually should be uh, not neglected, but carried out um, with uh, vigor. And um, always, always have the strong spirit and put all of your energy into uh, the, the keiko. Number five, it says, um, be faithful, to be faithful to the kihon, to the basics, um, as you practice keiko. Number six, um, so, uh, like, you should make attacks from yourself and be positive in your attacking um, and do this kind of uh, techniques whilst doing keiko. So that means, like, not just waiting and then hoping to block and do a kind of ojiwaza, but you should be uh, proactive, you should be positive, and you should be hunting for the next strike. Even if you use ojiwaza, you should initiate the... Um, uh, the technique, okay? Um, but really, it's talking about shikakite, so really, it's talking about you making an attack, and if you're going to make an attack, whether it's a uh, shikake waza, then it should be positive from yourself. If you're going to do the banawaza, then you must be proactively making them attack so that you can do the banawaza, and the same goes for all juaza as well. Uh, I've got a couple of videos about that, so check them out. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then finally, number seven, uh, after after practice, you should do the um, uh, like hanse. It says hanse. It's like the kind of reflection. You should reflect um, and study and examine um, your performance um, or or your cake. Or you should not forget to do this. Okay, so let's go over those seven points again. You should check your shinai. You should be safe. Make sure you're warming up. Uh, and keep everybody nice and safe. Number two, uh, it should be performed in a way uh, that has a, a definitive target and a willingness to learn and reach the target. Uh, number three, uh, you should place uh, heavy importance on manners and legi. Uh, number four, you should uh, treat with importance the shotachi, the first strike in a tachiai, the tachiai is the encounter, like a jigeko or that sort of thing, um, a competitive encounter. And uh, you should not neglect uh, each strike um, with, and you should always have um, a full spirit and put all your energy, your heart and soul into the keiko. Uh, five, you should, uh, you should uh, be faithful uh, to the uh, basics, the kihon. Six, you should attack from yourself. You should be proactive and you should go out there to hit. Uh, seven, uh, after, after practice is finished, you must reflect and you must study in order to improve. And that's it, okay? Uh, so, I think it's a great little passage. Uh, again, apologies that it wasn't such a fluid translation. Um, I don't know if, you, if you've noticed uh, by the quality of these videos, but I don't sort of sit and prepare massively for these videos. I just line up the questions, I answer them off the top of my head, and if I do something like this, I just read it out from the book. So um, I know it's not super well structured, uh, but in order for me to do this as, as, as a kind of regular thing, semi-regular thing, uh, this is how I've got to do it, because I don't have time to do it otherwise. I'm sorry about that. Um, obviously, I'd love to sit down half an hour beforehand and, and type this out properly as a, as a real translation, uh, but at the minute, I just can't. Um, but I hope you I hope you got the meaning. I hope you got the essence of it. Um, let me know what you thought. Uh, leave me a comment.
down there. <laughs> uh, let me know what you'd like to talk about next time. Uh, I'd like to also highlight one of the things uh, from the questions today uh, about the, the, the question that was about asking about becoming a sensei. Uh, it said that I'd like to ask this in an open forum uh, rather than asking my sensei. This is the perfect format for you to ask any questions like that. If you've got something you don't feel like you can answer, uh, ask necessarily publicly, um, then, you know, I, I, I do my best not to kind of let anyone know who, you know, I, I try and keep these comments kind of anonymous, really. Um, so e even if you can send it to, if you want, if you've got something particularly you don't want to uh, post publicly, you can even send it to us by email. I'll answer all the questions that we get. That's why, you know, even like last time when someone asked me what the, what the percentage of male and female viewers are and stuff like that, and obviously I don't know, and I don't know why, why, why it matters or why you'd ask it, but I, I answered it, <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, asking me about zombie apocalypses and stuff. So, you know, I'll always do my best to answer any questions you've got. And, you know, there's no stupid questions. Um, there might be some stupid answers, but <laughs> there's no, there, no, really, there's, there's no stupid questions. The only stupid questions are the ones you don't ask. So, um, yeah feel free to just 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 fire them out okay um there's no there's no sort of judgmental stuff going on nothing like that um if you've got anything in the back of your mind i'd really encourage you to fire it out there i can't guarantee i'll give you a good answer or the right answer uh, but i'm certainly happy to offer you my opinion <laughs> um so yeah other than that like share subscribe all that sort of stuff um there's this website called kendostar.com. <laughs> Make sure you do your shopping there. Uh, I run the site. I've already talked about how brilliant the Shania are and how brilliant it is. It is really good. Um, I don't think I need to hammer that home any more than I already have. Um, so I won't tell you about how brilliant it is and better than everywhere else and how it's worldwide free shipping. And there's a Halloween sale on right, right now where you can get really good prices on uh, loads of the most popular products, including the Shinai that I talked about just before. <clears throat> so yeah, I won't talk about that at all. So <laughs> um, other than that, uh, yeah, get over to kendostar.com and do your shopping there. Uh, thank you very much for watching today and I'll see you all next time.